Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. I know I am and today we're back with another video on Microsoft Flight Simulator and this one is on a uh, mod. It's not very new but it's really nice and it's shaping up very nicely. It's for the Diamond 40 and what this basically does is it improves a bunch of things about this. I'm gonna go over a few of the improvements. We're gonna do a quick takeoff as usual. I'm gonna show you inside the cockpit. And as usual, I will have a link in my description down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. It also lets me know you guys are enjoying the content. And what are these guys doing? Huh, during work hours, okay then. So, uh, basically there are some engine changes like proper fuel flow, um, there's now um, changed oil, coolant, temp and pressure behavior. Uh, increased thrust scalar. And now we have engine systems and fuel page which I will show in just a second. So let's do strobe. Um, let's turn on this. There we go. Your failure. Fuel pump for a couple of seconds. Bam. Avionics on. There we go. Strobes on. It's on. Position and taxi. There we go. Let's make sure Pito's working. It's working. Let's get the altimeter going and it looks like it's 29902 nice okay so let's go over this screen up right here so on engine we have this the engine we have system you can even see the gearbox temperature coolant temperature you have the electrical which is basically your battery or alternator oil fuel back on engine you see oil temperature pressure coolant temperature you have the fuel temperature the quantity if you haven't flown the diamond 40 a lot yet you're gonna use fuel out of the left tank and as it goes down you basically turn on the fuel transfer and this way you're gonna transfer fuel from, from the right tank which is in the wing all the way to the left tank this is the way this works until it's basically um, level okay so now we're gonna have correct cruise speeds. They increase the fuel capacity to 19.5 gallons per side. They, the developer also reduced elevator and rotor sensitivity, improved the stall characteristics. And now we are gonna have nose wheel steering as well. Let's let go of the parking brake. As you can see, it's moving. Look at this nose gear. It's gonna be so nice maneuvering those inside airports. Do we have our taxi lights? Yes, we do. Position landing is off. We're gonna turn it on in just a second. We're just gonna taxi to the runway. should be clear I don't see anyone we are in New Zealand at the Alexandra Airport as you can see Alexandra one thing I have not mentioned yet this mod improved uh, the lighting as well look at this so we have just so you guys know we've got landing lights on taxi lights on position and strobe and this is what you're seeing right here. Look at the pulse lights. I like this. I like this. One thing I have not mentioned yet, and it's something I feel like you guys would be better off having a look for yourselves, is basically the FedEx system. Um, we have the default state, which is the one I'm in, and on the default state, which is, as, as you download this mod, uh, out of the gate, it's gonna be on default, and you can actually use your throttle on your joystick, and flaps up. 
fuel pump off. There we go. It's going to be on a default state, and you can actually use the throttle on your joystick, on your flight stick, whatever you use. And they have these FADAC options, and I feel like it's best if you go over them yourself. Uh, on full FADAC, you actually have to use like the F2, F3 key, and then you can have it completely off. And if it's completely off, you kind of have to feather, not feather, you kind of have to control the RPMs yourself. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna fly for a little bit, I'm gonna show you guys uh, the cruise for a bit, so you can kind of see the way this aircraft behaves. We do have flaps up. Uh, I did forget to turn off taxi, I'm gonna turn off landing as well. Yeah, I think I'm gonna head like 320 330, something like that. Um, there we go. Looking good. Okay, now let's have a look at the autopilot. So, Alt. There we go. This way we can just start increasing the altitude ourselves. Let's do 5006. There we go, and now we can do vertical speed. This will be kind of close to where we are, and if we are close to the flight director, it's not, it's not gonna jump so much. Not sure if you guys have noticed, but... Uh, I think the heading is bugged, I press synchronize and it threw me off this way, I don't know why, but yeah. So it looks like the heading is bugged. Keep that in mind. Anyhow, uh, on the last flight simulator update, they changed something and the pitch sensitivity is a little bit too much. So when you turn on the autopilot, it moves a lot, way more than it should. It moves way too fast. I hope they fix that soon. Hopefully on the next update. Okay, it's 10 C outside our temperature. I'm gonna keep the pito off for now. We can do a thousand feet per minute. We have our wind here. Okay, good. Okay, okay. Okay. Nice. Just wanna have a look at the map, increase this a little bit. Have a look at where we're going, you know. We are climbing nicely, but I do think I might decrease the vertical speed just a little bit. And we're gonna turn left here and let's do 900. Let's see if we can kind of follow this river. Okay, can we keep our speed doing... no, we cannot. There we go. Maybe? No? There we go. So we're gonna be climbing at 700 feet per minute. It's fine, it's fine. Just gotta keep an eye on the uh, on the speed. So this is the way this aircraft performs. There we go. 
go. And for that system, it basically controls your RPM based on the load. So it's really nice. There we go. Outside our temperature is 5. Uh, I might as well turn on the pito. I might as well. Look at this. And the place we're flying around is really nice. New Zealand is amazing, I gotta say. It's one of the best places for you to do some bush flying. I really enjoy like New Zealand, Alaska, Canada. Papua New Guinea is really nice as well in the area uh, um, around Lukla. That's another really, really great spot. Okay, we're getting close to cruise altitude. I chose 6000 just because we have so many mountains around here, so if we are actually gonna cruise somewhere, we will be flying a little bit higher. It's not like we, if we were in like, let's say the UK, we would be, we would be flying like maybe 3000 feet above ground level, 2000 maybe. No. Nah. So many mountains, we gotta fly higher. There we go. And I am using the G1000 mod. They did update the G1000 for the last update. They, they really did, they updated all of their mods, the G1000, G3000 and G3X. There we go, nice and easy. Nice and easy. Now we just have to keep an eye on the indicated airspeed, so you can kind of see the the speed we're going to be cruising at. You know, I'm all for these amazing mods, the, the little tweaks, you know. Making it more realistic, improving the stall, the engines, the even the fuel fuel flow, you know. Like the CJ4 had a really nasty bug with the fuel, so it was burning way more fuel than it should. I learned that the hard way. Um, the CJ mod that we have out there is really good. Really, really good. Okay, it's still going up, 130. This is around the cruise speed we're going to achieve. 130, 133, somewhere in between that. And I gotta say, I really enjoy this mod. I don't, I don't see myself flying the diamond without this. And I feel like the diamond 40 is such a good alternative to the Cessna 172. Even though I love flying Cessnas, especially the 152. But the 172 as well, um, I really enjoyed the diamonds, both of them. And we are cruising. And again, I will have a link in my description down below for this mod. I will throw in the G1000 mod as well, because maybe that might help you out. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, it helps me out a lot. It also lets me know you guys are enjoying the content. And I hope to see you all again real soon, and until then, stay safe, fly safe, bye-bye.